Gear redundancy at the gig. Hey everybody, John here. Now I mentioned redundancy in my first couple of videos in this series. This video is about why you need to think about what this means. In the music industry, we use this word to describe plan B. Plan B is when a piece of gear stops working and it needs replacement. And trust me, everything you use in your show needs a plan B. In my 40 years plus, I've had just about every type of gear fail at one point or another. Batteries die, cables screw up, guitar strings break, and yes, speakers and mixing boards can die, but I will say that's kind of rare. As I said in my last video, I pack along a little suitcase I call my redundancy bag. And then I have this list I keep in there and I just make sure that I have at least a couple of each of these. Uh, XLR cables and then quarter inch patch cables, eighth inch patch cables, eighth inch to RCA, couple of ICE power cables, uh, spare USB cables, a set of sure in-ear monitors, uh, then I also have a Shure SM58 and a clip and a windsock. I might put my radial DI box in there, some acoustic strings, electric strings, a string winder and a cutter tool, spare capo, and then spare batteries, 9 volt and double A, I guess it'd be a Boss 9-volt power supply, and I also have this old cell phone that I use as a backup. It has nothing on it but MP3s of my backing track, as well as you see there's a mini disc player there that also is a very desperate backup if needed, but it's there and it works. Then I will always bring a second laptop, which is my netbook. I will have it set up with the same playlist as the main laptop. And, of course, I always bring two guitars. So that kind of covers all the simple things that could need replacing. But what about big things like mixers, speakers, and guitar amps? I've only had one powered speaker die on me. It was made by Behringer. It's pretty rare, but what you can do is either run just on one speaker or swap out your floor monitor. I can live without my monitor by simply turning the ones on the stand so that I can hear them. This is why I like to bring three speakers. Another plan B is my sure in-ear monitors. I always bring them with me just in case because sometimes you're in a noisy room and this helps. I only use one earbud with the Shures you can disconnect the other earbud and I hardwire them to my mixer using an extension cable here. I have them usually just kind of tucked down my shirt but when I need to walk away from my mic I just simply unplug it and when I come back, just plug it back in. So, another plan B. Mixers. <laughs> Funny how when I think about it, the only mixer that ever crapped out on me was also a Behringer. We were lucky, and where we were, they had a spare mixer. But ever since, I've had a plan B for my mixer. Well, it's a pain to lug around a second mixer, but if you're in a band, this might be the only solution because you need all those channels. But we are on the topic of one-man bands. Our mixers are small, so a spare is an option, but it's kind of expensive, and I've got a few other tricks. One option is... There might be a mixer built right into your powered speakers. Make sure and purchase powered speakers that have at least two inputs with volume controls like mine do. Some might even have a three-channel mixer, which is even better. Also make sure that it has the pass-through output so you can connect all your speakers together with a daisy chain. Most of them have this. You just plug your mic and your laptop directly into one of the speakers. Then you daisy chain the other one. The laptop will need my radial DI to use the XLR input on the speaker. Then there's other clunky adapter options that I could use if I go into my little toolbox. 
Just make sure and test this at home first in case the impedance isn't matching. Now, hopefully you have a guitar amp with you. That's redundancy right there for your guitar. If it's mic, that could go into the other speaker or just turn up the amp like we used to 30 years ago. This will get you by. My backup mixer is my TC Voice Live Acoustic Pedal. It's basically a three-channel digital mixer. I have my voice, my guitar, as well as there's an eighth inch input jack that I can plug the laptop into. Then it has two XLR outs that will feed the speakers. The beauty of this system is it actually sounds really good because of the effects. Now the downside is that the mixer is kind of hidden in little menus, so it's not that easy to get at. And just to make it easier to use, I would put it up on the table instead of on the floor. Now, guitar amps. My Fender Princeton died a few gigs ago after the third song. I was noticing something really nasty going on. I quickly unplugged the patch cord from the amp and I plugged it into the high impedance input on my mixer. Sounded great, but only because I play clean. This is why you need a pedal board. My sound is mostly from my pedal board. My boss tuner on the pedal board has two outputs, so I can send a dry signal to the TC Halcon pedal. So there you go. With a little forethought, you won't get caught with your pants down at a gig. It's much more important for solo performers to be prepared for anything that can go wrong. And knowing what to do can only take a few minutes to rectify the problem. And this makes you look professional instead of looking like an idiot. Enough said. Okay, folks, thanks for watching.